Hi everyone, and uh, welcome uh, in joining us in uh, CPA Global's webinar, Are You in Control Towards a 50% More Efficient CP com Compliance Cycle? Uh, my name is Dylan Mijn, and I will be your uh, moderator for this webinar. We have uh, three speakers today. Uh, first, we'll start uh, Raymond Gerardo. He is the Chief Operational Officer of CPO Global and has, has over 25 years of experience in the tax and transfer pricing field, performing roles both in the advisory and industry. Prior to joining CPA Global, Raymond was a senior relationship partner at KPMG and managing global and regional key accounts. Before that, he was the global head of tax as a Swiss of a Swiss-based Euro 2 billion company, where he was mandated to set up and manage uh, the global tax department from scratch. We also have then two of our uh, alliance partners. First is uh, J.D. Choi, who is the founder of uh, Tax Technologies, Inc. Uh, he received his J.D. from New York Law School and a BBA in accounting from the University of Texas. Um, he uh, is the founder of Tech, Tech Technologies, as I said, and he provided vision for tech series development and has been leading client services for the last 15 years. Tech series is comprehensive tech software that can facilitate aspects of corporate tech functions, data management, project management, task, task scheduling, and document management, in addition to handling of complex tax computations for corporate tax reporting. And last, we have uh, Michael Beck, who is the founder and managing director of Datenwerk GmbH. He earned his degree in mathematics from the Frankfurt University and has been focusing on IT development and operations and can look back on more than 25 years of professional experience. Since 2004, Michael and his team have uh, teams have su successfully developed a multitude of software solutions with a special emphasis on transfer pricing, tax, controlling, and finance. In 2013, the idea of a standardized app solution platform with the name FinApp Suite was born. Due to its flexibility and efficiency, the app solutions of the FinApp Suite are today used by many international enterprises in different industries. And they will uh, have a little presentation about both uh, softwares as well. Uh, we will have a Q&A session uh, at the end of this webinar. Please feel free to type in your questions in, in the chat box or in the questions box. You can do this, uh, of course, during the webinar, but then we will address them uh, at the end. Now I give the word to uh, Raymond. Thanks, Willem. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. My name is Raymond Cheradu. As uh, Willem already said, I have uh, some experience in the, in the tax world, both uh, in the industry as well as in, um, in the advisory world. And today what we want to discuss with you is how to become a bit more efficient um, in the tax function, focusing on transfer pricing in particular, and uh, how could we be of support to that for you. If we look at the slide contents, which is on screen, we'll do a quick introduction to show you a little bit the context of where we are. We will talk about types of software applications that you might want to consider, but focusing on your needs. We will also then try to uh, give you some highlights around potential benefits they could bring. Uh, we will then show you the TP Global Software Solutions Portfolio, uh, because not every uh, requirement will be served by every solution, as a number of you probably have already experienced. And then we will hand over to JD and to Michael to introduce their respective uh, solutions. And at the end, we do the Q&A. Next page, Willemijn. Why do you need to reassess what we call your in-control mechanism? These are some of the statements that we think apply today. Obviously, we all talk about BEPS. Uh, BEPS is not coming up with new, uh, new visions of the world, but it does come up with new requirements in terms of uh, compliance, in terms of transparency. And as a result, we can see uh, the cost of compliance, the, the volume of compliance going up. I think it's a quite a clear message. On the other hand, the world is becoming bigger, uh, but at the same time through the internet and through all sorts of technology solutions is also becoming smaller. 
which opens the door for multiple business to be operating in multiple countries. Uh, so the mix makes it a quite complex market to deal with. And then there are also a lot of transactions uh, going around between uh, jurisdictions. And we estimate, based on some information, um, that 70% of you know, the global cross-border activity is through related party transactions. So there's a hell of a lot of compliance to be taken care of as a result. If we look at um, BEPS and we translate that into country um, requirements, we are already seeing countries that are trying to implement some of the guidelines of BEPS. But what they're also doing is that they're coming up with, you know, slightly different uh, topics that they find relevant. And as a result, yes, the driven guideline for what they should be doing, but there's also country-specific requirements that drive additional uh, compliance issues to be reported. So it makes it more complex. Um, the rise of new business model configurations uh, speaks for itself if you consider uh, that we have more technology, internet, um, you know, social media. There is different models uh, coming up that need to be supported. Uh, also with uh, documentation because at the end of the day the tax authorities want to get a handle on what you're doing, how you're doing in this particular, if it's intercompany. Um, last but not least I would say the increasing number of TP orders is something that we expect. If you consider BEPS with its um, country by country reporting the transfer pricing compliance requirements we can all just start guessing what that means for authorities when they have this transparency about your business and what they would be looking at um, in particular and what that means for your risk of having an audit. I would imagine it is going up rather than down. Now, what does that really mean for your organization? If you were to ask your CFO today, what would he see or she see in this context of tax and TP functions what is actually the business case for that CFO in dealing with the tax function. I think what he will be seeing is that on the one side, the, the, the benefit side of a tax function for a multinational is sort of, you know, reducing in terms of opportunities to save uh, tax, if you will. A number of uh, nice structures like hybrids are being shut down uh, there is more focus on PE, uh, etc. So it appears that the savings potential is coming down. On the other hand, given the markets becoming more complex, the increase of focus on through the compliance is is maybe increasing the level of risk, uh, and thus you know you will have more compliance activity going on, more audits to handle which basically means for a tax department your costs are going up. Your management time is moving probably too much into a direction of compliance. So if the business case for the CFO looking at the tax function is less value, more cost, the question is what is he going to do with that information? And one of the things is he wants to sort of manage the cost down, manage the cost of the risk down and how is he going to do that? He's going to probably put a lot of pressure on you to come up with a lower cost organization which potentially means less people, less support from advisors, which is exactly what you can't use because you have an increase of work on your desk. So that calls for efficiency. Where? Okay, will I mind the next page please? The approach that we're taking and you know, this is not just something that we just figured out and now trying to, to bring to the market. It's something that we are already applying with some of our clients. If you think about it, sometimes we do get a question from a client who sees this business case I was just the referring to. He sees that business case in the sense that he needs to do something on the efficiency side and everybody immediately jumps to the gun and says, okay, I need to have a software solution where I can put all my information in, I push the button, and I get the result that I want. Well, that's not quite how it works. And if you do it that way, you probably will be a bit disappointed about the outcome of what that will deliver. 
um, actually you should be doing it more on a reverse engineer way, which means start from the start, which is how does your organization look like from a TP perspective? How does it look like from a risk management perspective? And what is it actually that you are being asked to communicate and to whom? So in essence, what we're talking about is we would like to help you understand how to best organize yourselves from, a, from an organizational point of view. Who takes what role? And if you produce transfer pricing document, is it the tax department that produces it all? Or can you also use people in the business and finance functions whatsoever? Um, and then how is data coming to you? In what form? How can you analyze that? Are you doing that from an analytical side to, to determine tax risks? But then if you want to mitigate it, are you doing it again? Or is that something that goes into other departments, other units, etc.? So basically, through trying to figure out and helping organizations to focus on their organizational setup, we can already start aligning a lot of the processes that do take place within your tax function in such a way that you have what we would refer to best practice, but it also helps you already to focus then more on how to deal with, in this particular case, the transfer pricing operational side of it, because you can then start focusing in more detail around who takes care of master files, local files, DP forms, CBC reporting, and when is it being produced, thinking about your calendar, and who is responsible for this. So the organization helps you to define also who does what in terms of the transfer pricing output. And once you have defined what it is that you need, when you need it, and who is producing it, and which components are involved as part of building a master file, what's the process? You could already start thinking of, okay, how can we now rationalize this in such a way that we can make it more efficient? we could bring certain pieces of that work into a, we call it here a shared service center, but it's more like to say we group it and we put it into one bucket and then make one person responsible for it. Or we can take certain process elements out of it and try to automate it through you know, the software solutions that you may have in-house, if it's just financial reporting per se, it could be done by your finance organization or if the tax department wants to have a certain control and wants to do analytics on top of it, it probably would need a tool enabling the tax department to do this rather than always relying on your finance function. And if you go through this sequence of, um, of steps, one of the things that we try and, and set as a target to really make the compliance cycle much more effective and much more efficient. And we believe, and, and we can see that already a couple of times, that if you have the goal of creating what we call now a BEPS compliant organization and you add automation there where you need it, you can have quite a reduction in terms of resources needed uh, to deliver against these requirements of something which is in the 50% up range. Um, can you go to the next page, please? Now, what we have done here is we, we try to give you a bit of a picture of some of these processes and functionalities that you could be looking at if you focus on the TP side of your business and you look at the operations that you need to, uh, to deal with. Um, you first start looking at how to actually report, what to report, when to report, your TP system, your design, the planning of that. That is a strategical way of looking at your TP operations. And you have capacity planning, your benchmarking exercise, how to deal with uh, TP report writing. I can go through each and every one of them, but they are just examples of functionalities that you need to take care of in one or the other way and the question is, how can you effectively make that more efficient? And what we have done is we look at all these functionalities, and I've gone through a list of many, many uh, providers of software solutions and try to figure out who could connect with one of these functionalities that you need. If you think about TP report writing, 
that is obviously part of the compliance uh, part. Are there solutions that could be made available that just focus on TP report writing if that were where you or your organization believes it can have an efficiency coming up if it would do that. In others, it's in the tax provisioning area where they want to have an automated reporting uh, tool to, to generate um, you know, current and deferred income taxes, run uh, the disclosures that need to go into the financial statement, etc. Or is it more? And what we've then put together is a group of partners, alliance partners that we have contact with and that are mainly focused on creating the software, so they're more like software houses than they are tax service houses. And these are then basically the ones that we want to introduce to you, but first we need to understand where do you believe or where do you have the possibility to uh, save your efforts, your resources and get efficiencies. Uh, by doing that, next page please, by going through a process like that, we believe that your benefits will be that you have a better ability to plan and optimize your tax and TP structures. Why? Because suddenly you you do not have to spend as much compliance time anymore as you used to, be, to do, which allows you to do more analytical work around the data that is coming to you and probably the data has more reliability so you're you, you have a better understanding of how to run your, your shop uh, as well as uh, how to do your analysis around what to do next, which will obviously mitigate to a large extent your potential tax risks. You can still choose to keep certain and then manage that risk as you go through the audit, but you have a better insight in where you are and what you want to accept as risk and what not. Uh, and last but not least, which is the driver for the exercise to begin with, is also to, to, to find the way to satisfy your CFO that I mentioned at the beginning, that your costs are not necessarily going up, although you have an increase of compliance requirements, but now you can manage it more efficiently. If you go to the next slide, gentlemen. Basically, this is a snapshot of the, um, the, the organizations that we work with um, that have created tax technology or transfer pricing solutions in, or even more than that, very capable reporting uh, capabilities and analytical capabilities are available in, in a number of these. And what we want to do now is to introduce you to two of them. And, uh, the first one being uh, JD uh, with Tax Technologies. JD, can I hand it over to you, please? Thank you for that introduction. Um, we can move to the next slide. Um, we're the company. If you uh, if you if you go back to your childhood days, you may have read the book from Ace of Fables, The Mice the cat and the bell, and none of the, the, the mice <clears throat> wanted to tie the ring around the cat's neck. And we are the company that actually does uh, what should be done, I tying the, the bell around cat's neck. We actually implement the BEPS solution, uh, among other solutions. Uh, there are five major parts to our solutions. First is a compliance where we compile uh, BEPS reporting, whether it is master file, local file, country by country reporting. We compile the entire report so that the reporting process can be made efficient. Second part is the audit readiness. We uh, maintain the integrity of the supporting data and we preserve all the supporting documentation in any digital format in a centralized depository so that you can uh, be ready for the increased scrutiny on transfer pricing. Third, is, third element is planning area. Our data architecture allows you to 
um, run alternative scenarios in BEPS reporting, especially country-by-country uh, uh, country reporting. Conjunctive to that function is a business analysis portion. Um, I, when you plan the alternative analysis, or as part of your, of your compliance, we provide a business analysis. For example, we provide multi-year comparison of your BEPS reporting. We provide a comparison between the statutory tax rate across the countries to the effective tax rate on BEPS reporting. So before you report, uh, the BEPS country by country report, you can have some idea on your audit risk and assess that before uh, your reporting is finalized. The final portion is really administrative function, which includes calendaring and uh, project management. As the due dates and other elements of BEPS compliance will be, will be um, governed by local country uh, legislations. You're going to have to face a number of different due dates and administrative uh, burdens uh, of handling the variety of uh, compliance requirements. Those are embedded in as part of the uh, overall application. So this is how we, uh, we, we tie the bell around the, uh, the cat's neck. It will help you with the uh, compliance by producing a report. We help you with the audit by maintaining the supporting documentation. And we also help you with, pl with planning and, uh, 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 and business analysis by maintaining multi-year data and data across our clients and across the, the countries so that you can assess your uh, audit risks. And then we help you with the um, administrative functions such as calendaring and project management. That's a, uh, that's a short summary of what we do with our application named Tax Series. I think uh, I'm out of my time, but thank you very much for this opportunity to present Tax Series. Hello, this is Michael Beck of Datenwerk. So I think the next part is mine. <clears throat> so today I will introduce the FinF2 suite, especially the TP matrix, which is an app out of the FinF suite platform. The um, FinF suite is an initiative of uh, Datenwerk, which is the technical partner, and TP Expertise, which is our uh, business partner uh, in terms of uh, tax knowledge and it's a complete suite of different applications with different scopes and um, the TP metrics is mainly focused on intercompany data so it allows efficient data collection it allows to match data between different related parties it allows to create uh, reports for the TP documentation and analyze the data. In the background, we've got some workflow management and um, some flexible interface to different ERP systems, which I will explain on the next slide. So it's based on 11 years of experience in developing TP software and um, controlling the dashboards. And um, the benefit is we are able to provide a quick start and have got um, an easy and cost-efficient solution which allows you to go from uh, some small start uh, but extending the application from um, a single app to a complete suite which interoperates and allows you to have the big picture. Um, the TP matrix um, also contributes to our country-by-country country reporting. It um, generates the intercompany, intercompany matrix, and another module, the TP questionnaire, allows to collect the CBC 
reporting data, which is based on questionnaire and allows flexible collection of data. So um, we've got um, in, um, clients in four different industries at the moment, which are parts of automotive, healthcare, agriculture, machines, and um, therefore we collect um, experience in um, going online and um, analyzing and transforming data into TP documentation relevant data. If we go to the next slide, we have got a picture on um, uh, on um, the different parts. So um, we integrate into the um, existing system landscape. So our experience, the standard applications which we are using during the TP um, processes are your ERP systems, your email calendar, and other uh, content like Excel, SharePoint, or file system. And we um, are able to integrate into this landscape and to generate a central database which allows different uh, uh, departments to interoperate uh, efficiently on the same data. We support process management, we support analysis, and we are able to um, aggregate structured and unstructured data. It's a combination of services and tools, and um, our goal is to be simple, to be easy, understandable. We focus on the results, and we are very flexible and modular. Our advantages are uh, you have got increased compliance. We already talked about audit processes. Since we collect data, we archive data, and whenever your tax auditor asks for information, um, you are able to go from your TP documentation, from the single transaction, depending on your raw data, into the single voucher within your ERP system. It's clear and transparent and provides a consistent process, and um, you've got improved communication and collaboration within your department. Our experience is that um, if clients use our software, they are starting at a data quality of around 30% matches, and um, uh, by using our software, we are um, enabling teams to build knowledge. So it's not that um, people need to work with single data, they communicate with, with each other within the tool, and uh, suddenly knowledge spreads, and um, you've got a 4 and i principle which allows to generate knowledge within the group. If we go to the next slide, it shows the base functionality of the module of TP metrics. So uh, we integrate different um, systems. So for example, we've got experience in SAP systems, and we are able to integrate different sources at one time or we can even combine different data, even at, at a different granularity. For example, we are able to import raw data on voucher level, or we can also use consolidated data from your consolidation system. And we are able to mix it with, um, for example, um, calculation sheets of services and integrate other systems. The advantage is that this raw data is um, enhanced by filter rules, and these filter rules can be optimized by your TP or tax department. You do not necessarily need uh, programmers to adjust uh, different rules within your system to add missing tax data. We are able to add the missing data by defining intelligent rules, and you're able to analyze the result and work with your data, and finally you get your intercompany metric. This has got one advantage. You have got um, transparent rules, how to get from the raw data to the documentation, and vice versa. So if your tax auditor asks, you can directly click on the original data. 
Then currently we are building some new um, functionality, which is a planning module, which allows you to plan the different workloads. And then we've got the questionnaire module, which allows you to collect the country by country reporting, which we think is finalized at the end of October and integrates with uh, the existing intercompany metrics. We are offering two models, either rent or buy, which means um, if you um, choose to collaborate with us, we can set up some environment within a few days and directly start. Typical projects um, take around four to eight weeks to have the first intercompany metrics extracted out of your system. You do not need to modify um, your bookkeeping system or your processes during your accounting. It's very simple that we add missing data and we allow you to work with your data and make things transparent. So this was my part. I hand over to Raymond. Well, I think if that was your part, then we are very close to the end. Uh, Willemijn, are we opening up for Q&A? Yes. So everyone, if you have, your, have uh, questions, you can uh, type them in the questions or chat box. We will wait a minute for the questions to come in. Okay, we got a question from the audience. It says, can your software solutions fully automate C by C compliance cycle? Um, answer from tax series is yes. Okay, that's clear, thank you. Uh, Michael, is it also applicable to your software? Um, fully automate, um, no, it supports since um, we um, support that um, you probably um, will not be able to automatically generate all information. Our experience that um, you've got existing data, but in general, uh, reality is a little bit more complicated and you need some process to manually adjust um, your outcome and the software gives you full control of um, automation and collaboration. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Wait a minute, one second. JD, you said yes. Yes, we Does have, that mean uh, that we have a go. prefabricated uh, report. So as long as you provide underlying data, it flows to the report and analysis automatically. You build interfaces? Yes. So you could tab into a, um, an existing SAP or ERP system and you can then uh, map it through the um, through the interface and then back into your report generator, right? Right. And we also have a data collection module that will allow a the any companies to use so that if they don't have the automatic interface between the internal system and our system, they can also use the uh, the data collection module, or they can also use the import module where we allow a uh, uh, CSV file to be imported as well. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Willemijn? I have another question. Um, uh, how is your system able to deal with different currencies? Tax series. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Okay, I'll go ahead. Tax series is a multi-currency system, so uh, its data model already contemplates multiple functional currency input, and it can dynamically translate to reporting currency of any choice. Okay, Datenwerk, same with the Datenwerk FinApp suite. We provide both. Either you choose to have um, different currencies, local currencies, group currencies, which can be directly extracted from the ERP system, or you choose to have a simplified method 
which takes the local currency and calculates on averages and therefore is able to generate group reports and to compare data either between different units or between different years. Okay, thank you. Then we have uh, another question about industries. Uh, what types of industries are the software solutions capable of serving? Well, tax series is not necessarily in any industry specific. JD uh, or Michael, this is, you this want is to comment uh, on that? And can your software be any? Um, yes, uh, this yeah. is, sorry, uh, Michael, uh, you go first this time. Yeah. Okay, so Datenwerk is not uh, industry specific, so we've got a large experience in different um, industries and um, it's adoptable to, we've got experience in automotive, healthcare, agriculture, uh, machine building, so it's compatible to any industry. Yes, tax series is the same. Uh, tax series is not industry specific, so it can handle um, a variety of industries, and we are handling a number of different industry clients. Okay, thank you. That's our uh, clear, uh, clear answer. Then another uh, question. Uh, how secure is my data on these software platforms? Can you go ahead, please? Okay. Um, we have well, one of our key clients is largest financial institutions in the world. Um, and we have to go through their data security uh, audits every year um, and in addition we are going through independent SOC audit, uh, security audit and even our application is a SaaS application and the data is stored in a um, uh, cloud servers um, therefore we have enhanced our securities to meet all international security standards Okay, Datenwerk provides sorry, both. Okay. Datenwerk provides both. So first of all, our software also um, went through different security checks and penetration text, tests, and we successfully succeeded to go through these um, tests. And um, then we offer also to run um, the application within your environment if you do not want to hand over data to any external um, party, then you can run the application within your own environment. So we provide both. Thank you, guys. Uh, another one. Um, uh, is on-site training uh, possible when, when the uh, client uh, receives a license of, of any of the software solutions? Okay, yes, answer is yes. On-site training is available. And we also um, provide a implementation assistance, assistant uh, during the, uh, the implementation phase um, because we have um, a share, a service center um, across the um, different countries. So on-site training can be part of the implementation or separate from the implementation, but the training is provided as part of the implement as part of the licensing. And Datenwerk also provides on-site training, um, and also uh, we collaborate with um, different um, um, tax um, consultants, uh, which also um, provide consultancy and um, collaboration between the integration phase. We've got different project templates, which based on our experience over the past years, and um, we um, train you or we help you to get um, the process up and running. Thank you. Another question. Uh, what level of automation can be achieved in a six to 12 month per period? 
Yeah. yeah. Um, in terms of the automation, when you use tax series, you're using tax series that's already configured to produce country by country reporting, a local file, uh, a local file compilation, and master file compilation. So from purely application and implementation perspective, uh, six to eight months is enough time to fully automate the um, uh, BEPS reporting. However, the bigger question is whether the company, i.e. our clients, are ready to have, uh, ready with the, their data. And the, uh, the system to system configuration, that is the IT uh, function, and normally that has to go through the security reviews and vendor reviews and everything else. Uh, that is actually time consuming more than the application and implementation itself. You normally six to eight months in a medium size to a larger implementation is uh, generally sufficient for the uh, for the CBC implementation. Um, DATMEF um, also uh, allows a high level of automation within six months and less. Um, it depends a little bit on the um, detail which you want to achieve with your data. Um, we are, um, were able to implement um, running um, systems within even four weeks if we can rely on existing um, processes and existing data. So it's very easy to integrate the system since we've got open connectivity and if we are able to use, for example, consolidation systems, then it's very simple to integrate and we not, do not have much uh, issues with your IT department. That's our experience that um, some enterprises um, have got difficulties in allocating IT resources and here we are very lean. We can integrate on existing data and combine data and then allow you analysis. If you want to go deeper and have a voucher level, depending on, the, on how large your enterprise is, uh, we need to cooperate with your IT department to extract your data from your ERP system, then average um, projects are um, three to up to six, seven, eight months. Thank you for uh, your answers. We've got another question from the uh, from the audience. Uh, does your system have the capability to monitor or evaluate changes on a real time basis? Yes, our answer is yes. Um, once the data changes, then uh, it can it propagates throughout the system, and that is exactly the function that we use to uh, provide planning function. Um, it, for example, you can use uh, one in one case a set of data. And in another case, using the same baseline data, you can derive another case and modify the data to be able to have a comparison of the two uh, alternative positions. And that is done on a real-time basis. Okay, Datenwerk provides a mechanism to have different periods or different version of periods. It depends on how often you ex uh, transfer data into our system. Then you can compare, but it's not real time um, since we, it depends on the frequency of your comparison. Thank you. We've got a, another uh, question from the audience. Uh, how does the software allow for local nuances or areas where compliance requirements do not necessarily follow the OECD or head office model. That's a very interesting model. Uh, that's an interesting question because um, OECD is contemplating the local country requir specific requirements to be incorporated by year 2020. Our uh, solution is standard solution. However, it is 
a uh, it is customizable for each country. We have a standard uh, reporting module um, with the uh, with the uh, report with with the data structure, standardized data structure. The way that we contemplate that we will um, accommodate the local country specific requirements is by expanding the data elements that are required across the countries and produce different reporting of, of the same data model. That's how we contemplate the uh, specific local country requirements when that becomes available in year 2020. Okay, Datenwerk um, has got a flexible questionnaire st structure for the TP questionnaire. Um, therefore, we are able to extend our data model and um, change the um, type of data which is collected. The reporting itself is customizable, which means you can add your custom templates and therefore group um, a reporting um, outcome and also add uh, country-specific uh, information to single reports, which can be saved and then used as a country-specific outcome. Thank you. Then uh, a different question. Uh, does your provided solution require additional software licenses, or do you provide an all-inclusive solution? Uh, what was the question again? Uh, does your uh, solution require additional software licenses, or do you provide an all-inclusive uh, system? Oh, we do not require any other additional software licenses. Okay, thank you. The Datenwerk system, you've got two choices. Either, either you rent, then it's um, the full service. You have got a monthly rate, which includes software as well as infrastructure as license for anything or you can buy our system, then uh, you require uh, one application server and one database license in-house, but normally this is not a big uh, issue since it's um, custom IT requirements and we implemented our systems within 40 clients and there was never an issue to get the system up and running. Thank you. Then another question. Um, the, the three phases of achieving a 50% more efficient compliance cycle that Raymond was talking about in the beginning. Um, do I need to, can I implement these three phases on a parallel basis or can the software solutions only be implemented after complying with the TP operational and organizational best practices? Shall I take the first step? Sure, go yeah. Yeah, I think um, I think it's really necessary that an organization really understands what its real requirements are. If it has an op if it has really defined its needs, it cannot it can also be more uh, precise in terms of uh, asking for that to be delivered by um, anybody delivering uh, solutions uh, in an IT environment. Uh, I think it's it's first setting the scope in the in the right way, and then you also know very well what the outcome will be, and you can select then much better which software solution does fit your needs. Um, that would be my recommendation, and um, obviously uh, JD and uh, Michael have uh, have their own experiences, but that is what I would be recommending companies to do first to get their needs clearly defined, rather than starting on the back end. J.D. Michael? Yeah, I agree with that assessment that you, the company should have a um, pretty clear idea as to what they are looking for, whether they are looking for a particular outcome or whether they are looking for a transfer pricing analysis. Say, for example, whether the, the company has to decide whether they are looking for a transfer pricing analysis tool to make the transfer pricing analysis process efficient, or they, do, they have to decide, we really need to have a compliance aspect be made efficient. That discussion should precede 
to the selection of the software. And once that decision is made and best practice is determined, then you can choose the software that fits that overall organizational goal. So our goal was in the design of the software um, that um, we have got different processes which we can um, improve and um, we provide starting points where you can generate quick wins but in general it it's um, helpful to have a good understanding of your your goals where you want to go to. Um, but we showed that we've got different phases, different levels of maturity where clients start quick and small and improve over time. And this is the advantage of this type of software that you can have got quick wins to start and um, the maturity level grows over the time as soon as you um, get a better understanding of your internal processes, of your data, and working with it, uh, working with our tools, uh, improves your knowledge and then allows you to improve your processes over the time. Okay, thank you all for that uh, answer. Then we have uh, one last question. Uh, what major organizational and technical challenges you see multinationals are facing while they aim to implement a global transfer pricing system? Um, do you want me to go? Yes, please. Okay. I think just as in any uh, any new process implementation, there will be significant um, um, acceptance that is needed for the change management. For example, traditionally the transfer pricing reporting was viewed as a uh, comparable analysis and transfer uh, pricing analysis and corresponding adjustment and contemporaneous documentation. Going forward, BEPS reporting will be far more structured reporting than it had ever had been because BEPS Action 13 has uh, provided, provided pretty clear guidance on very structured reporting requirements and it also stated that um, there will be some agreement that if the companies, uh, companies comply with the minimum requirements under the BEPS guidance, then the, uh, for example, the burden of proof will shift to the um, examining tax authorities. So, so therefore, there will be significant effort on the part of the companies to provide a clear structured reporting that follows BEPS action item 13 pretty uh, uh, verbatim. So on, up until now, if the, BEPS, uh, if the transfer pricing is viewed as more storytelling, uh, post BEPS, there will be more a, like, uh, it will become more like form or structure reporting. And that is going to be a significant transformation from a, a large um, corporate um, uh, taxpayers' perspective, and also be able to handle multiplicity of the reporting uh, stemming from the same uh, set of data across the across different countries. That will be a, a significant challenge as well. Obviously, the next item is the uh, the increase in audit, because this uh, entire best reporting. Uh, he really predicated upon that the, uh, the, in, the, the intent of the developing countries uh, increased audit activities to increase the, the tax revenues. So that will be a, my, uh, my expectation. Michael? From, yeah, thank you. From my perspective, I think it's um, data quality will be one issue since we've got transparency over different countries. Um, there is a certain risk if your data quality 
is not fitting and you're reporting different um, tax issues about, uh, for different countries. So this is one part. The other part is efficiency of your processes. So our experience is um, we are facing um, not the ideal world uh, with our clients. Uh, we see that if we enter um, enterprises, there are issues with accounting and data quality. And what we allow is to improve the process from the back end. You are able to get your data. You are able to establish processes which improve the quality of your data. And you are able to reflect this into your organization which allows you to improve processes which are out of the tax department like international accounting or other things and therefore the benefit is that you will improve over the time. But I think reality shows it's very difficult to do a one shot that you've got a complete concept and you can directly organize anything from scratch. Um, my experience over the past years was it's a growing process. You need to attract people, to con convince people, and um, having success and having good data, having good products um, allows you to convince other departments and uh, improve the process over the complete enterprise. Okay, thank you, uh, Raymond, JD, and Michael for presenting today. This is uh, the end uh, of our webinar. I also uh, um, thank you all for uh, participating, for attending. Uh, we will upload the, sh the slides and the recording to our website, and you will receive an email once they are ready for you to be downloaded. Thank you, and have a nice uh, rest of the day. Thank you very much for your invitation. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. All right.